Hello everybody, my name is Olivier Archer and this is the behind the scenes of Bizango Blast. If you don't know, Bizango Blast is a physics game that I created for the iOS devices uh, using the UDK. The UDK is the Unreal Development Kit. It's a pretty sweet uh, deal uh, for free. You can get the Unreal Engine without the source code and you can make whatever game you want. If you decide to make the game commercial, you just have to pay a $100 license fee to Epic Games, which is very welcoming to the indies, and I really appreciate that. Then also you have to pay 100 bucks to Apple for the license fee to, uh, to release it on the iPhone. But the cool thing is that you don't have to pay for any of that until you release your game. So anyways, back to here. This is the title screen, and I'll show you how it's made. Oh, well, this is all the menu level. Ooh, the last one is hidden, because I want it to be a surprise for the people who play the game, because it's, it's pretty special. It's pretty unlike all the other levels. Uh, this is the menu level. Uh, this is where all the menu action happens. The game starts on this screen, with this camera pointing here at the title, which I might change in a patch. Most likely will. Uh, and the play button is actually a 3D object which uh, acts as a button. You actually touch it and then it will take you to the level select stage where uh, the uh, objects for each level will appear. They act as the buttons as well, so you have to touch them. So for example, you touch the first one, which would be a tree. You get taken to the level select stage of stage one, uh, level select area of stage one. Here you have the floating blocks, but obviously as a player you don't see that. You see more or less this. And then as you unlock the levels, the boxes fall down. And the boxes themselves are the buttons, so you actually have to touch the, bo the box and then it will take you um, to the level of your choice. Also the stars pop up on the uh, boxes. They're attached. It's all 3D. It was my experiment to try and make as much as the menu and interface 3D as possible. Um, it's the same for all the level selection stages, as you can see. Uh, I will show you a bit of how I coded. Um, I'm not really a good coder myself. And so that's why I decided to use the Unreal Engine's Kismet Editor. Basically, it's like coding, but visually. You set up all the nodes, and then the engine will translate it into code. So this is how, this is all the stuff that's controlling the menu. And this is uh, the variables that get saved and are able to be reset when needed. Here controls where all the, what happens when a level gets loaded, and depending on which level. So for example, here uh, when level 1 is loaded, it starts the music. Uh, if you have it off, then it will not start the music. And it will make the sky appear, and then it will make the sky spin, and all of that good stuff. So I'll start showing you one of the levels. So I go to the level browser. As you can see, there are 50 levels all handcrafted for you. Yes, you. All right, let's, let's go there. Where is it? Oh, it's like being in outer space. Woo. All right, so this is uh, level one of stage one. It's the forest stage. Um, basically, you have the cannon here. Ooh, too fast. You have the cannon here. As you can see, ooh, there's a light. As you can see, the arrow buttons themselves are also 3D objects, which are dynamic and move. Uh, the fire button as well is a 3D object, and it shrinks. So are the balls, which will as well probably get changed, because uh, some people don't like them, and I make the game for the players. This is inside the cannon. This is a view that you'll never get to see in the game. It's all textured inside. And this little box is what spawns the ball and shoots the ball. So the ball basically goes here, hits this thing when it's up, and then ooh. So 
Let's simulate that. Whoa! Poof! Hit the satellite, all falls down, you win. I'll show you a bit of the code here. For example, I'll kind of break down the kismet for you so you can kind of understand how it works. For example, this is a level loaded node. So that means when the level is loaded, it will fire off a signal. So here, when the level is loaded, it fires off and it sets the camera, which is camera 6, as the welcome camera. And then after that, it, it goes to another camera. So you have one camera at, one dis at point X, another camera at point Y, and then it will interpolate between the two cameras, all just with magic of three nodes. Yeah. I could not, I don't know, doing that in code does not fascinate me, but doing it like this is quite interesting and it motivates me. Like for another example, uh, for example, when you press uh, the fire button, uh, when you, the input is pressed, it, uh, it goes to the power camera, so where you see the bar that raises and then uh, it's a bit zoomed back out so you can aim. That's what happens here, it goes from here, it checks the gate, it goes there so it doesn't continually go to it. And then while you're holding that, once you let it go, the uh, signal gets sent here and it chooses a random number between 1 and 3 and then it chooses another camera. So that gives you the multiple camera views and it's a random thing. So I didn't want there to be a pattern in which camera it chooses or to choose the same cameras over, so I decided randomness. But a strange thing I noticed about this, uh, it doesn't always work, but I noticed that the, it will always try and choose the camera with the ball in it. So if you're always shooting to the side, it always chooses the side camera or, I don't know, I noticed that maybe there's a little ghost in the machine or if it's something by, Unre uh, by the Unreal dudes. But basically I'm just telling it to go to random, but it's, sometimes it seems like it chooses intelligently. Or it could just be randomness, true randomness, who knows. It's, it's complicated. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, so I can go into more detail if anybody's interested. Like, for example, all of this is the uh, score system. It adds, multiplies, subtracts whenever needed, and then it adds up to the score, which gets uh, printed out on the screen. And then if the condition is higher than the previous high score, it replaces the old high score, and then it saves the high score. Uh, if you break it down, it's quite simple. Like this, it looks scary, but when I started the game, it obviously didn't look like that. It pretty much started with this, this, and this, and then all of this came along. Well, yeah, and this too, because that is actually what controls the movement on the platform. It's a bit messier, it could have been done simpler, but it works, I understand it. Also, it's very important to comment all of your work because, especially if you're working in a team, because anybody can be looking at this and be like, what the hell is going on here? This doesn't make any sense. But if they have a comment, they can understand that, oh look, this controls the spawning of the ball, this is the shooting order, that's the muzzle flash, uh, that spawns the balls. This is a check to see if the game is paused so it doesn't create any conflicts. Which is a thing about gaming, like you'd think something would work but then it affects another thing, it's kind of like a butterfly effect so you always have to be checking for things like that. Anyways, once the ball is spawned, it sets a velocity to the speed that is determined by the shooting strength. And then it goes on to do more things, and more things, and more things, and more things. So, yeah. Oh, one last thing. I will show you a quick view of, like, the bad guy system. Uh, it's very simple. Basically, it's like when it gets touched, it subtracts health. If the health reaches uh, an amount higher than 700, it dies once it's reach that condition, it blows up, it destroys objects, makes the uh, sp uh, particle effect explosion, adds the points, it tells the game that yes, one enemy has been killed, so if the condition is that one enemy has to be killed, well that condition has been met, and then you win. Uh, the, all the objects that are physical kind of have the same thing, 
except for the bosses. Yes, there are two bosses in this game. Their monster code is a bit more complicated. It's funny because it kind of looks like a brain. That's the right side and that's the left side. Very simple brain, but yeah. Anyways, I hope that wasn't too boring and I hope uh, any aspiring uh, game developers who are interested uh, picked up a thing or two or this motivates you because uh, I think now it's a good time to be making games. It doesn't cost much. You don't really have much to lose besides a bit of time and you have a lot to learn as well. Uh, there's a lot of information out there. There's 3D Buzz. There's the UDK Central. There are a few sites. Just Google UDK on YouTube with tutorial and you'll find a lot of stuff. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested at all in making video games but you're like, oh no, I can't code. Give the UDK a try. You can do nice games. I mean, don't expect to do Mass Effect or anything like that because you need a team and a lot of money. But if you're going to make a simple, fun game, go for it. So this has been, uh, my name is Olivia Archer. I hope you enjoyed uh, the behind the scenes of Bizango Blast. If there's anything you'd like me to go more in into detail, uh, just leave me a comment and I will do it. So yeah, enjoy, take care and have a good day.